Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is episode nine of Stav's Build. We are getting ready to put this bad boy together. Stav, what's going on? What do we have left to do? And are you excited? Well, since yesterday we installed the clutch, but we didn't torque it, we found out today that we have to uh, put Loctite on the, uh, the the bolt for the clutch. Correct, and Tilton calls out 19 foot-pounds for the actual bolt, so we'll just pop these off real quick, throw some thread lockers, Nin torque it on. 19 foot-pounds. Correct. That. Okay, so that really means 200 foot-pounds and a 90 degree turn. <laughs> All right, so what's left, what do we have to do? So we're gonna have to make the, uh, make the transmission after you torque the clutch. Uh, but before we do that, we gotta swap over my slave cylinder, my actual custom brackets, you know, I'll throw that out there. And then... Uh, the oh, throw up bearing throw, well. throw up, yeah, the throw up bearing. So the throw up bearing, we're gonna have to swap in from his gold trans over to this one, Correct. and then we'll be able to make the trans onto the motor. And then after that, once we make the trans on the motor, before we even put it in the car stop, what are we doing? We're gonna be uh, swapping out my terrible stock axles that have ripped boots. And then, uh, well, I mean, it's hard to keep boots and axles. It's crazy, you know, they consider A4 axles to be really weak, but your 12 valve didn't break them at all. Kept them both together. Those are S4 axles, actually. But anyway, let's, let's throw that out there. Um, so we're going to have to swap out the DSS axles, bolt them in, torque them, uh, and hopefully we get the motor in today and uh, firing in the next 40 out, 48 to 96 hours. <laughs> all right, guys. So this is episode nine underway. We're going to already get just started. Enough talking. Let's get this motor. I was taking apart the rest of the trans over there, just for the parts. Mm -hmm. Did you check off the uh, throw up, uh, throw up bearing yet? No, I didn't. Okay. And then we'll uh, swamp it into this. Clutch is now torqued, thread locked, good to go, still aligned. And then we'll make this transmission very, very shortly. Oh, I gotta throw in one of these bolts here. So it's one, two. Yeah, we gotta we gotta throw a bolt in that adapter plate right there. No, you don't. That's where the transmission goes. No, transmission goes into this. This goes into oh, the adapter plate. Right yeah, yeah. So this one goes into the transmission. So I gotta. Yeah, we'll need another bolt for that. I'll grab that real quick. And then, oh, I also want to talk about where's that bolt that goes through the frame? This this one right here. So if you guys are doing the swap, check this out. There's a small bolt he bolt here, a bolt hole, and this actually goes through the actual adapter plate and actual casing of the bottom of the motor. So the cool thing about this is, is that on the back of the trans, uh, there is a bolt hole that you can put one large bolt going through all the way through the trans, through the adapter plate, and through the block. And the good thing about that bolt is, is you want to keep the motor and the trans from wanting to twist away. The, 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 the messed up thing about using an adapter plate, even if you're not using, you know, dowel pins, which we are, it's hard to keep this thing from not flexing, right? You're going to make power with these cars. You're going to make power with these motors. Uh, flex is a huge Wait, issue. What? You're gonna make power with these motors? You're admitting it, huh? Go back to work. Do you need some crayons over there? Anyway, so what you will call it, uh, one bolt going all the way through and tying all three, both the motor, the adapter plate, and the trance together is gonna really help this thing from not wanting to twist apart. And that's gonna help you keep clutches happy. That's gonna help you keep uh, motor mounts happy. Again, trying to solidify and keep this thing as solid as possible under load and while you're driving around. The, the, the VR6 is already a heavy a heavy motor. Uh, the O1E Trans is, is still very big. And then on top of that, applying 40, you know, 35 to 40 pounds of boost, making seven, 8,000 wheel horsepower in these cars. Just give yourself every chance where you don't want any flex whatsoever. <laughs> so anyway, let me go grab a bolt real quick and we'll put that in and then we'll continue on. Hey guys, just a heads up, we received a ton of private messages and emails last night talking about the tilting clutches. A lot of people reached out saying they had issues with the actual uh, uh, splines. We actually solved that with Tilton about a couple years back. So um, what Tilton used to do, they used to provide these, these hub centric, uh, not hub centric splines, I'm sorry, just the splines for these uh, discs. They used to come with a softer material. Um, so what they did was they offer a hardening service. So just make sure that you make sure that if you pick up a clutch for the O1E, because the input shaft is so hard, um, and also this, these motors end up, and even though the 2.7 had the same issue, uh, end up having to put down pretty decent wheel torque, you end up stripping out these hubs. In fact, I have the old discs here. So check this out. This is, these discs are about, I'd say, I dropped some stuff. These discs are, I say, about three or four years old. And we, and, and believe me, we did this like three or four times. And at first they were like, oh, well, it's an alignment issue. You're having issues. 
And I won't lie to you, it's dead center, stripped right to the center with no, you know, look at that. And there's no markings on our input shaft whatsoever. And then the second disc, I think this is the second round we ended up saving, was like the last one that was bouncing around but barely even grabbing. Um, so we did that about three or four times. So we finally said, hey, um, that's enough. We reached out to a friend of ours in USP Motorsports who says he had a carbon clutch. And I looked up the carbon clutch on Tilton website. It says it comes with hardened splines. And I'm like, well, do the hardened splines need to come on all O1E clutch discs? Uh, so this is actually the standard ceramic clutches with the hardened splines. I ran them for about three, three and a half thousand miles. And you can see the splines still very new, still very clean, nice, no issues, no grinding marks or anything like that. So make sure if you're going to be ordering the Tilton clutch guys, or if you guys are stripping them out, and you know it's not an alignment issue, reach out to Tilt and let them know you need the hardened center splines on your clutch discs in order for you not to have any issues. Um, a rep from Tilton about a year or so back said that they were changing all their o &E Audi transmission clutches, uh, the splines to all hardened as standard, but there might be a few kits out there that haven't been. So if you happen to get one, before you install it, reach out to Tilton, give them your serial number, let them know, and they'll, and they'll give you a heads up whether or not they're hardened. If they're not, swap them out it's definitely going to give you guys a huge relief and less of a headache god forbid you're stripping this thing at an event or even just cruising around now we we're making uh, in the version one of my silver car we were making ba <laughs> barely any power and we were stripping them out so That's now true. with barely making any power, just like now. thanks i appreciate it so for those of you guys that have had issues with the tilton clutches just to let you know i have the carbons now in the car uh, they're way over mileage now, so I have to shim them or if not replace this and that's what that's the deal with carbons That's just what happens, but the ceramic the only issues that we had were the center splines uh, So they've held up pretty well uh, But we'll see how much power stops gonna end up making and see if they end up slipping but for now For the splines if you guys have had issues or you guys are looking to install make sure that you're getting the hardened material on the center So everything's torqued ready to go Stops finishing swapping out the throw up bearing here. He put the brackets on uh, looks like he already swapped out the slave cylinder too, which is pretty cool. And then what we're going to do is lift this transmission and basically just align it this way versus putting the engine lower to the ground and trying to align it, putting on the engine stand. We, we used to spend 30 or 40 minutes doing that. And then the last time that we did this, we did it literally on the engine stand and it slid right in and we were able to bolt everything down and it gave us more access. Um, which kind of reminds me stuff. I think we're going to have to invest in my garage here, uh, some kind of official work table rather than fold out tables from Walmart. So this way we're not working that, on the is, floor is, like this. Is that the same as Walmart or Walmart? Wal Walmart. Walmart. So I'm gonna have to, uh, I think we're we'll gonna have to invest in a solid work table so we're not always just working on the floor. All right. I mean, Stav, you're happy on the floor, no? No, I'm good. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the deal with that. So for those of you guys that had the issues or questions, thanks for reaching out. Thanks for giving us a heads up, just FYI. Um, Again, hardened splines on there. Anyway, let's mount this transmission. Stav, you ready or what, man? Hold on. You got some new sunglasses there? What are you wearing? Yeah, I got the new Gucci integrated. Uh, what? Yeah. They didn't send you a pair. Well, I, I can't wear a pair while I'm trying to work. How the hell are you seeing anything? You can't do anything without them. <laughs> Stav, what do you got there? Um, upgrading uh, to a to a different throw bearing. Tell us more about it, George, since this is your setup. So this is the same same throw bearing. I'm also running in my carbon setup. So this is the 034 billet throw bearing versus you got the factory one. Yes. Uh, um, oh, here it is. So this is the factory throw bearing, and there's a huge difference in sizing. Not that much, but in quality. Obviously, the OEM is good, but it still has plastic and other metal, small little metal components in here and it may be prone to failure. So 034 came out with their billet throw out bearing. I ended up having a spare since I bought a second one for the carbon. So now we're gonna throw that into Stav's trans now that he's looking to go a little bit more competitive and start making some more serious power and then also shifting a lot more aggressively too. Correct, and you know, this one is well worn. It's been on a 12 valve, so you know it's probably like bent and everything inside. This has been on a 24 valve, so it's basically brand new. <laughs> All right, you're welcome, Stav. All right, <laughs> install that in. And then once that's in, we'll be able to make the actual uh, transmission to your motor finally after eight episodes and then we can get the motor in the car All right, George, what's going on now? So if you come over here um, We have bolts pretty much all over the trans from the 12 o'clock position going all the way to the six on the right hand side But there's not one bolt here except mm -hmm. there's a spot right here on the bottom 
It has a little bit of a lip on it. I don't know if you can see that. And we're mm -hmm. just gonna tap it real quick with a little grinder, kind of clean it up. This way when a bolt goes on there, the head of the bolt doesn't rest against the casting and crack the casting on the transmission. Ask me how I know that happened, but. How do uh, you know, George? We just want, I just want one bolt to go in uh, just on the driver's side. Pretty much we have like six bolts on the passenger side and this is just yeah. gonna help it kind of keep it centered. It has a little bit of a here. gap too. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Stav, if you could see it, could check this out. It has a little bit of a gap from the bottom. You see that? Correct. So if we could just tighten up that gap, make sure that it's completely flush to that adapter plate, I think we should be good. So I'm going to hit it with our good old grinder real quick. I'm going to put this over here. But question, George. How do you know that it would crack? I'm. What? We learned from our mistakes here, and uh, I ended up... It was... It was an off day for me, and I didn't realize it. I ended up cracking. Any day of the week, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, pretty much. So anyway, I'm going to grind this real quick <laughs> and kind of clean it up. Just well, take off just the hair off that casting and then allow it to bolt. Today is a proud day for me, George. Why? You have been making fun of me wearing sunglasses. But here, I in, in this shop, this OSHA approved shop, I want to make sure, what do you call it, you wear the proper PPE. So I'm going to give you a pair of these integrated engineering glasses. To make sure that you these don't These are approved for grinding? Yeah, these are approved for grinding. You Correct. sure? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. 100%. I don't right. know if I, I can trust you, Stav. I mean, they're, they're teal. Uh, everybody knows that teal is approved for uh, grinding. Hold on a second. Wow, man. You just got faster. I feel this overabundance of confidence and, and, and crap talking about to come up for no reason, even though I don't have a running car. Yeah. Does that happen when I put these glasses on for you, Stav? Just grind the freaking <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Let's get to the grinding. So remember I was telling you about that one bolt that goes through all three? So there's the back side of the transmission bell housing. Here is the one bolt that goes through the transmission, the adapter plate, and the block. Again, um, one basically one nut little thread locker, and it's going to keep and help your car and transmission from flexing from either side. It's, we've also used several dowel pins in the transmission and the adapter plate. So this is just added security, but if, you know, some people might say, oh, you know, you know, I didn't use that and my car ran just fine. Well, these are a lot of these guys that are saying that are guys that ran these swaps for like 400 miles and then parted it out. So Correct. if you're looking to keep these swaps for a while, if you're looking to, if you're looking for the long run for the VR6 swap. we're not saying that it's not ne uh, necessary, but we just, you know, there's, there's a spot for us to try. Correct. So we, you know, we're adding as much reinforcement as possible. If you have the availability to put a long ass bolt to go through to secure it, to keep it tight, and it's going to help it from keep it twisting, and you're looking to compete and go fast and just safeguard, Cold you know, ball anything ball. damaging, <laughs> uh, why not if you have the spot to put and, the bolt? And let's show them all the bolts that we use, because a lot of people ask that with the VR6 swap. So to, from the trans to the actual adapter plate slash bell housing, we have the 12 o'clock. Technically 230, the three. We have the lower transmission bolt here. This goes from the adapter plate to the back of the bell housing, kind of pulls it in. And then from the back of the oil pen to the adapter plate is another bolt here that goes here. It doesn't go to the transmission, but it still secures that at like roughly around the six o'clock. And then at the seven o'clock, here's a small, uh, small little bolt that secures to the adapter plate and helps close the gap. Again, the driver's side, you're really kind of stuck in terms of hardware that can go through the transmission uh, into the bell housing. So it's really only one bolt. So we double our efforts up at the 12 o'clock in pretty much every other position just to make sure that it's secured. Now, here's the hole that Stav was talking about before. This is the adapter plate to the block. And what he did was he match drilled the hole so he's gonna put a bolt through there in the nut and it's gonna help secure the adapter plate to the actual block no once it's done. No nut there, it's, the block is threaded. Oh, is it threaded? Yeah, correct. I thought it was, okay, so yeah. my bad. So it is actually threaded. Correct. So that's just the bolt that actually goes through and it'll help keep the adapter plate flush to the block. Yeah, because a lot of times we've had people that reached out to us and asked us, oh, I think I, I don't understand how the adapter plate goes on there and they mount it and they actually don't mount them like a line. Like they actually have them like oh. slightly clock. Grab one of the adapter plates real quick stuff. So for those of you guys that are really kind of, don't overthink the adapter plate process thing. Oh, what hardware, you know, I don't know which bolts to use. There's gotta be a set bolt. You know what we did? We took one of these, went to the local hardware store and just Correct. matched it up, Correct. took our lengths. Now there was a couple different trips because oh man, that should have been a half inch longer or that should have been an inch shorter. But I'm telling you now, do not overthink this adapter plate stuff. It is simply just metal and parts and bolts. So if you're not sure which bolts to get, it doesn't matter. No one's gonna sell you a kit. And even if they did, it's gonna work differently for everyone depending on what kind of setup you have. So just go to the hardware store, save yourself some money. It'll, you'll spend about 30 minutes there. 
get your hardware, come back to the house, and you're good to go, and you save yourself a whole bunch of heartache. A whole bunch of people that have emailed and contacted us, man, I'm stuck, I just, I don't know what belts to use. I'm telling you, do not let it, do not overthink it, because that's what I did back in the day when I first started the swap. Um, I overthought a lot of stuff, and ends up being really simple. So again, check out your local hardware store, and you should be able to get a lot of this stuff. So stop, what are we doing now? Uh, we're just gonna mount the last few uh, tidbits on the motor, pull it off, and then uh, we're gonna mount up the removing uh oh we're gonna put up the star yeah you're that's right. right that's right uh thank thank you uh george uh <laughs> we're gonna be, i forgot we're gonna have to put the starter on that's and right. put the uh the last two bolts because it's easier i mean it's easy to do when it's in the car too but since we have it and it's fully Before accessible we mount it up, Steph, can we talk about the starter what kind of starter are we looking at i'm using a vr5 starter so it's a vr5 and what other starter would work as well oh the 034 motorsport starter which i used to use but other than the vr5 what is another factory starter that will work so it's going to be the phaeton phaeton you're correct phaeton starter is also going to work and let's see if we got the part number on here just my part numbers it. are not on it but we could also provide it though is it not on there no it's cut from maybe brake clean it came off let me see it's not even engraved or anything like that no 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 it's oh, not. all right well believe it or not these starters can be had locally uh there's an online resource you can get them if you need them uh i'll see if i can grab the part number before the video is out and see if i can put it in the comments below but don't overthink again the starter if you can't really Listen, a lot of people are not going to be able to afford the 034 $500 starter. It's made out of bill. It's a badass starter. It's a heavy duty, like, it's a heavy duty unit. It's worth it. But if you can't afford it and you're looking to spend about 100, 150 bucks, there's a factory option that you can get and it bolts right up. The only issue is with the 12 valve, you either have to clearance the block. You see all the grinding that we had to do, Steve? Uh, we have a light here? Oh, no, we can show them on my other motor. Actually, they could see it too. See show? all that? Yeah. See all the grinding that we had to do? The 12 valve is only, the only thing that sucks about the 12 valve is this. We have to grind the inside of the block to make the starter fit. On the 24 valve, these starters are plug and play. Yeah, and people might be asking like, hey, like people that are not doing the swap, just watching, maybe just because they like, they think we're funny, or they just happen to have a you think beef you're funny? Yeah, people, it's all over the world. But anyway, like, <laughs> We're showing you guys stuff that you guys say, oh, that might, you know, that's like why we're showing you. When I was actually putting my um, starter in, we didn't actually know that. We kept trying to put it in. I'm like, dude, it's the starter we used last time. How come it doesn't work? And on the new block, we uh, have to start grinding. And then the thing is, people are not talking about what we're doing here. Like, pe people are not talking about, like, there's a lot of things that are, like, not found on, you know, information found on the internet about these swaps. And we just want to show you the little tidbits. So when you go into the swap and you hit a, a little bit of a wall, maybe you could use this as a resource to, uh, you know, what do you call, uh, help, you know, help you get through your swap and make it that much easier. So you know? Stav hit the nail on the head. The biggest problem the Audi community is, aside from some of the... the All car communities. Well, I think in general, the Audi community in general and Volkswagen, there's not a lot of information for this kind of stuff out there. And a lot of people try to keep it close to their chest. There's a lot of them own businesses. A lot of them try to make profit on this stuff. Let me ask, let me tell you, uh, we're really happy to see all the influx of YouTubers out there that own Volkswagens and Audis that have kind of flushed out and they're starting to post all their builds. So just keep in mind, when you guys are seeing this stuff, this is the reason why we go over these small little, which may seem like useless facts, but if you're looking to do this swap, this is information that people used to pay a lot of money for. These are parts that used to cost people a lot of money. Again, some, some companies charge five or $600 for custom starters. OEM stuff works. The OEM adapter plate works. There's a VR5 adapter plate you could probably buy from eBay UK or eBay DE. There's a lot of resources you can to get a lot of these parts that will work. However, keep that in mind though, the $500 starter options that are out there are pretty badass. They, are. they work really well. They're meant for people for racing applications. They're really stout. So we're not trying to devalue anyone else that offers parts for these cars. Uh, but just keep in mind, there are, there are other resources that you guys can get for these cars. So anyway, let's continue on. Uh, we're going to install the starter, uh, put the rest of the tidbits on, and then we're going to take this motor and trans. Actually, before we do that, we got to take the axles off. Correct. And then we're going to, let's do that now. We're going to pop the axles off, get the DSS axles on, prep the rest of the motor, and then drop it into the bay. You yes. excited? Yeah. Are you excited? Pretty excited, man. All Pretty right, excited. let's get this going. Dude, this tool is great. What tool is that? The Milwaukee uh, M18. What? Shameless plug. So let's, uh, let's pull that off. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's all it is. And we just pop out the axle on the other side, huh? Hopefully. Got the motor all done up. And then it just pops out. Look at this thing. Yeah, this thing has a lot of power, man. Yeah, I know you're not. I know it's surprising to you coming from a 12 valve, so that thing you must have a lot of power. You don't know how I held all this power with one hand, just like when I hold the steering wheel. <laughs> Did you pop that bolt off? Yeah, yeah. Nice. I dropped something. Not sure what, but I dropped something. Stock axles. Now we have cores, so we can send out another to DSS for me, and I can get some DSS axles too. 
Oh, no, they don't sell them to you. Your name is blocked. Right. So stock axles are out, guys. We're pretty much almost, we're actually ready. Yeah, Motor's <clears throat> prepped. Transmission is mated. Starter's on. Now we just got to get the engine hoist off of stop spare. What's that? And we'll stop, we got to put that away too, because that was a good motor, no? Correct. The stock one. Correct. We'll get the engine hoist over here. I mean, it was good enough to whoop your butt. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, okay. But, yeah, rice yeah. or flybys. All right, guys, so now we've gotten the axles out. We're going to install the DSS axles in. Again, once the motor and trans are out, it's super easy. All it is is one hub bolt. Axle slides in. You tighten the bolt from this side, and you're good to go. So let's grab your DSS axles real quick, Stav, and let's install these bad boys. Oh, snap. DSS axle. The hubs look a lot beefier, too, or maybe they're just cleaner. The hubs are cleaner, but you can see that the bar is solid compared to the hollow bar that's in the uh, yeah. stock axle. Nice, and there's the shifter cables and everything. Yep. All right, tighten these bad boys up. We'll get the motor in. We'll catch you guys back in just a moment. So what's going on with this motor stuff? Are we done? Are we ready? Basically, I'm just, just started right up. Turn the key right now. Engine, uh, engine brackets are on. We just got to mount it now in the car. But, but, everything is pretty much done on this motor. It is ready to drop in. But we just got a phone call. We have to go pick up a two-liter Volkswagen GLI motor. GLI motor that came in for uh, for our youngest brother Paul. Um, his motor is starting to see a little bit of rod knock. He, uh, we'll get into that in another episode. But we have about 30 minutes to go pick up this motor now. So we're going to run and go get it. Cut this episode off short. And then we're going to kick off tomorrow's episode with us actually installing the motor, putting it together, and then firing it up. But we want to make sure that everything was pretty much buttoned up and together. Uh, I think we need to take off the turbo and put a new gasket on that one. That's the only thing left to do. But everything is pretty much on there. Yep. I think we're there. Minus the serpentine belt. This motor is pretty much ready to drop in. It's looking good, stuff. This is looking good. Sealed up, gasket, silicone, so it'll be ready, dry, ready to start up. Let me see how it looks. Damn, looking good, man. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're gonna wrap up episode nine, and we'll see you guys on episode ten. Till then, I'm George. Stop. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next episode. We're gonna run and go grab this motor, and that's gonna kick off an entirely new build series. So we can't wait to showcase all that as well. Uh, see you guys in the next episode. Devil in a red dress Call 911, I'm a killer